Poet, writer and anti-apartheid activist. He helped found the Union of Black Journalists. We now take you live to Santon where the lecture is taking place. Title is And Yet. I've known silences, long and deep as death, where the mind questioned the logic of my frailty. In the immense of my destruction, in the imminence of my destruction, by men ruled and ravaged by power lust, I've known deep silences when thoughts like angry waves beat against the shores of my mind, revealing the scars of brutal memories and the murder of my manhood, and yet I cannot hate. Try as I want to. I cannot hate. Why? Barbara, how beautiful. And please accept all of our condolences on the loss of two of these, two of your jewels, really. I'm so sorry to hear that, we didn't know. And thank you for sharing so beautifully uh, and so deeply. Really appreciate you. I want to introduce um, our moderator for today, somebody who's gonna curate this conversation. I am looking forward to it so much. Um, she is an award-winning veteran journalist, associate editor of the Daily Maverick. She's also been at the helm of both the Mail and Guardian and the City Press. She's also a colleague, but I call her my sister and friend, and sometimes we, we share tips about clothing and makeup. You've threatened our makeup today, Barbara. I spent three hours putting this face on and I was gonna cry. <laughs> Her name is Feriel Hafiji, ladies and gentlemen. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you, lovely Iman. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Don Matera and gathered guests. Alhamdulillah. Peace be upon you all. It's wonderful to be with you and I hope that your dear sister and mom are resting in peace, Barbara. And thank you for sharing your story with us. So before we get going, I am to say how I know Don. So I grew up in Westbury, Bosmont and Nuclear across those three suburbs and I was perplexed by our oppression and by apartheid. And I remember just before the tricameral parliament was launching, coming into being, I attended a play by Don Matera at a community or a church hall in Westbury. And the words that stuck with me for helping to narrate and navigate that world, because it came about at a time where black people were being co-opted into the apartheid project, and where black and colored policemen, Indian as well, were the worst oppressors of our students and our people and I remember that play where you said the poem um, my one-time brother my one-time friend um, and those words were so material to me your words your poetry your your writing taught me about the liberating force of words to narrate our worlds at the time because they were appalling worlds for which you didn't you couldn't explain them very well. And also, more importantly, the power of words to press for a better world, because often that was all that we had at our disposal. Obviously, later, uh, you were an associate editor of training at the Weekly Mail, and you trained a generation of us, this grand man, this Donato Francesco Matera, this... Umaru Dean Matera would walk around in that newsroom with a scarf just like this one, I remember so well. Um, and I suppose as I've thought about you, um, it was less that you taught us verbs or nouns or typing, that was somebody else's job. But what was most important is that you taught us to see ourselves differently in the world and to walk differently in the world. To walk with confidence, to stake a place and to take a place. And for that, many of us must thank you very, very deeply. So, so Professor Jonathan Jansen is our keynote speaker today. We all know him very well. He 
he's South Africa's educationist extraordinaire. He is an ambassador for children. He is a fine public intellectual with a finger to the pulse and a Twitter timeline that you absolutely must read if you don't already. He's a distinguished professor of education at Stellenbosch. He's a he is the president of the Academy of Social Sciences where he's doing marvelous work. And he is the previous and shape-shifting vice chancellor of the University of the Free State, a storied and awarded son of the soil. We very much look forward to hearing what you have to say to us today, Prof. Jonathan Jansen. Are you there? Can you hear? Hi, Cyril. Uh, let me just check whether you can hear me. We can hear you beautifully. Fantastic. Oh my word, two of my heroes on one stage, Firio and Iman, uh, what amazing people. And um, what an honor to, to deliver the inaugural Don Matera lecture today. I so, so wish I could have been there with you um, physically. Um, the title of my talk, which I thought about a lot um, in the case of, of uh, Bradon, is Unbowed and Unbought. And that, of course, is uh, drawn from uh, one of my favorite quotations by the scholar intellectual Cornel West, um, uh, Unbowed and Unbought. And, and what I want to talk about very briefly is what Don Matera teaches us in a broken country. Now, um, when I first met uh, Don Matera, it was at the launch of my very first book, an edited volume called Knowledge and Power in South Africa. The publisher at the time was uh, Scotoville, uh, Scotoville Publishers, and I think uh, Don was uh, uh, one of the directors. But what I remember as a young academic from that special evening in Bramfontein was the felt presence of this formidable man and how respected and loved he was in that assembly of people in the early 90s. I knew then what I'd already suspected from his writings, that this was a very special human being. And for that reason, among others, it is an incredible honor to, to be able to, to honor uh, 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 the great Don Matera. Now, um, <laughs> I cannot <laughs> say his names with that wonderful Italian accent of um, uh, 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 Iman, but uh, Donato Francisco Matera is, is a man, it seems to me, who defies classification. Um, and that is a very difficult thing to say in a country that has made a fetish out of fixing people's identities in terms of race, ethnicity, religion, and the like. But Don Matera actually defies in his very life and, and his living uh, any form of classification. Let me give you a few examples. How many people do you know who um, had an Italian grandfather? His own father was colored. Uh, whatever that means, and his mother African. How is it that you could have in one person a violent uh, gangster who also achieved the Peace Prize uh, of the World Health Organization in 1997? How do you have an activist who received banning orders under one regime and national orders under another regime. For those of you who are curious about the latter, it was the order of Ikamanga in Silva uh, uh, in 1997. Here you have a man who fights with sharp knives at one point, and then with sharp words at another point, as a poet, as a writer, as a journalist, as a playwright. Here you have a man who is a Muslim, but the product of a Catholic convent school, and who in one of his poems quotes from Christian hymns such memorable lines as fast falls the eventide, 
and when other helpers fail. For the curious, um, these are uh, words from Abide With Me, a very famous Christian hymn, which was composed by a Scottish Anglican in 1861. Here you have a man who once destroyed lives and now has become one of the most iconic community builders of our times. And finally, here you have a man who joined the National Forum because he believed the UDF <laughs> was not racially inclusive. Uh, uh, Don, you'll have to help me understand that one <laughs> at some point and so on. But clearly, a man who defies classification. What is the point of this, uh, of what I've said so far? That in his life and in his learning, and indeed in his loves, don't demonstrate what it really does mean to be a citizen in a democracy. Or as my friend John Samuel puts it, you know, he teaches us through his life the habits of democracy what does that mean it means that you cannot and should not be defined by origins by who your parents were or where they came from it means not allowing others to define who you are it means not to be trapped in some given identity it also means not to be constrained by political loyalties and not to be defined by your past. At no time in our history is this more important, this kind of commitment, than now. The organized attacks on foreign nationals, especially those from other African countries, is deeply, deeply disturbing. Somebody tweeted the other day because of my tweets on uh, going after these people, uh, said on Twitter, once we have deported them, we are coming to deport you. Uh, and, and I found that very, very interesting, uh, which is fine, except I'd like to know in advance where you're going to deport me to. That would be, that would be most interesting. You make a huge mistake, ladies and gentlemen, if you think this is only about organized gangs like Dudula or frustrated township residents. It is also our government in a dangerous messaging throughout the civil service to do head counts of non-South African employees. Worse, in some of our universities, there are now EE policies that make it virtually impossible to hire academic talent from other African countries. <clears throat> Let me just uh, divert here for a second. I don't know a lot, but I know a little bit about universities. The one thing I can tell you, no university, no university becomes great in its development, in its research, in its teaching, when it only re relies on the natives, if you know what I mean, on us, on the locals. No university in the world. It is an extremely stupid idea to think that you can build training and development and research institutions without taking the word university seriously, which means the universe of talent, the universe of ideas, the universe of... Uh, anyway, UCT's new policy on employment is one such example as a despicable document and it should uh, not be allowed to go ahead um, to basically cut out. Um, and I, I ask you to remember what our universities would look like without the Cameroonian Akilimbembe at Wits University. I ask you to imagine what Stellenbosch University would look like with one of the most highly sci uh, uh, cited scientists in the world uh, 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 in the agricultural sciences, uh, sciences. I ask you to imagine what UCT would look like without Francis Niampo. And so, uh, uh, you would collapse the University of Fort Hare, that I know for a fact, if you had this kind of policy 
against African nationals uh, in in Ellis and East London. It is absolutely despicable thinking. And so don't fool yourself to think that this is only about, you know, poor people in the townships. This is also about the civil service. And I'm ashamed to say it is also about our universities. As I read Don's work, I suspect a very strong pan-African solidarity that energizes his thinking. Think of this beautiful poem he wrote, Zimbabwean love song. Sing and dance, sons, daughters of Zimbabwe. It is the call of a timeless glory and the heat, the beat of the native song that beckoned you to struggle on. Nana Zimbabwe, it was your dance of daring feet which set the bush ablaze, made the dying sweet. Sing and dance, daughters and sons of Zimbabwe. It is the rooster that sings of children marching against the wind. The white night is dead. Freedom walks in the sunrise and in the glow of an eternal love song. I'm sending this to all my Zimbabwean friends on Monday. The further point of the discussion so far is of, of a man who denies classification is that Don moves around a lot, like somebody else whom I just had the pleasure of recording um, a, uh, a lecture of this kind, Delsa September. Um, he cannot find a place in a single political group he moves. And this allows the man a fierce independence. In other words, he is, to use old language, his own man. <clears throat> Nor can he be tied down to any particular religious sect, for, as Don himself put it, the highest religion <laughs> is compassion. I love that. The highest religion is compassion. Um, I, I fret very often when I look at you know, where I grew up, uh, which was essentially evangelical faith, and I look at the right-wing evangelicals across the world, particularly in the U.S. at the moment, and I think people have just forgotten the very simple compassions that should guide your life. Things like... Things like love your neighbor as yourself. Um, things like it is, you know, better to give than to receive. Uh, uh, things like, you know, welcoming the stranger. That's actually what all faiths, all Abrahamic faiths are about. And yet we don't live this highest form of religion, which Don calls compassion. He belongs, but he is not owned by any party or any faith or anyone. Now contrast this with the ANC officials in Cape Town, who in the middle of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, went for celebratory drinks at the Russian consulate to commemorate a political relationship. They are owned. They lack independence. They lack integrity. It is they of whom Don Matera wrote, they crawled for the colonial crumbs of comfort and sold their souls for money. Contrast that sniveling position with the white comrades that Don Matera once described, men and women of conscience who sacrificed their days that others might be free. What drives a man who cannot be classified is that conscience lies at the center of his life as a development activist. He said this more than once. My personal mission is to remove pain and suffering from people's lives. This is not supposed to sound profound in democratic South Africa, and yet it is, for it stands in contrast to what so many in our government does. Three examples quickly, the utter decay and dysfunction of some of our public hospitals. The fact that there are still hundreds of pit littering toilets in many of our public schools. 
the demise of almost every one of the SOEs. Why? Not because of a lack of competence, but because of a lack of integrity. It sometimes feels as if our country is in an ethical free fall. And three things happened recently that, you know, I'm a very optimistic person like Don. I believe in the children. I believe in, you know, country's future and so on and so forth. Um, but the other day on Twitter, I saw a man running <laughs> with the robots, the traffic lights, you know, that long yellow pole with the, with the light fixtures still at the other end. <laughs> and all those heavy electrical cables inside. And because it was heavy, he had to come up to breathe every few you know, minutes. And there the camera was tracking this man, stealing the robots. And somebody in one of the captions said, steal until there is nothing left to steal. What has become of us? This is not what Don talks about. His mission is the opposite. Um, Ferial, in fact, I think posted something about, I think it was one of her relatives taking a photo from across the road, showing people literally uprooting a bus shelter and putting it on the back of the bucky. So the robots goes, the bus shelter goes. And I work with schools, as you know, a lot. And the other day I went to a school in an area where I grew up where everything in that school is stolen. That school is as fortified as Paulsmore Prison a, a few kilometers away. Everything gets stolen. And there's nothing left to steal. And then I realized how depraved we are. The school planted grass just to beautify the place a little bit. Pond planted a bit of grass in front of the school. Do you know that these gangsters jumped over the fence at night, dug up the grass, and went to probably sell it somewhere. I mean, it's not just that we have a corrupt government um, that seems to have gone over the edge. It is that ordinary citizens now also believe that, you know, since they steal at the top, I have one life, let me steal at the bottom. This is not to remove pain and suffering from people's lives, but Don, didn't you get the memo? almost still. The truth is that there are thousands of Don Materials around the country and in every province that keep this country together. We have more NPOs than all other African countries combined. We have a functional civil society in a highly dysfunctional state. What is special, as I move towards the conclusion, what is special about Don Matera's approach is that he puts children, as you heard before, and in that little um, track at the center of his development commitments. And this comes out beautifully in any number of his poems. Under apartheid, he wrote, no children. There are no children in Soweto. Langa, Manenberg, they are dead, jailed, crippled, blinded, tortured. If it stopped there, you wouldn't have, you have a real picture, but you wouldn't have the complete picture. Because in song for this child, those very children give us life. Let this child's bright eyes conquer the cold darkness, shine across the tortured earth. These children, in other words, <laughs> lift us from despair, as he says in Child, the poem Child. And children again came, again came, pure and cleansing. The children planted a new Africa for a new world. I believe that Don Matera's deep and broad involvement in the lives of the children of Eldorado Park and elsewhere is driven by this faith that the future restoration of our humanity and the security of our country lie with his youth. It is a vision that I share and one that I support. So finally, how can we thank you today, Don Matera, 
for showing us how to live our lives. You're right in child. What do men or women live for? If not to be remembered by their beloved. I want to assure you, Don, this afternoon, that you are well remembered and that you are deeply loved. Thank you. Another round for Don. Thank you very much, Professor Johnson, for that beautiful inaugural lecture on the unbound, the unbought Don Matera, taking us all the way from our past to this very moment um, and making us reflect not only on all that we don't have, but what we do have. Um, wonderful civil society, very important people doing work in the non-profit sector. Thank you so much, Johnson. I believe that you have to leave us, so we will say farewell to you as we call on our panelists to join us. All right, that is the inaugural Don Matera lecture taking place uh, in Santon under the theme The Child in 2030. Let's take a short break. I'll bring you more news at uh, the top of the hour. Do stay with us.